you back in my geography class. Today we will continue with the chapter of maps of class 5 geography. In our earlier videos, we have discussed about the maps, the types of maps and also that how are maps useful than the globes. Today, in this video, we are going to know about the elements of a map which helps us to read the maps. So without wasting much of our time, let's get started with the elements of a map. Joe and Harry are going for a vacation in a cruise. Their uncle, Mr. Roger, is the captain of the cruise. While playing in the cruise, they found a map. Joe said to Harry, Hey, I know what is this. This is a map. My teacher has told us about this, but I don't know how to read it. Both of them hurried to Mr. Roger to know how to read the map. Mr. Roger said, well, dear children, if you want to know how to read a map, then you must know about the elements of a map. Now, what is the element of a map? We are going to know about this today in this video. So, children, we have already learned the definition of a map. We have also learned about the different types of maps. Today, in this class, we will learn how to read a map. So, we will learn about the elements of a map and we will know about each element in detail. So what are the elements of a map? Elements of a map means parts of a map. So maps have certain elements and they are number one, directions. Number two, scale of a map. Number three, colors. And number four, symbols. So the elements of a map are directions, scale of a map, colors and symbols. Now, these elements are quite important. Why? Because this gives us information about the map and the area it covers. So, suppose if you are lost and you could not find out a location of any place, you can easily locate that place with the help of these elements. So, if you know about these elements of a map, it will help to read the maps easily. So, these elements of the map are quite important to know how to read the maps now let us know about one of the most important element of a map that is direction now to find out the location of certain place we must know the direction so that we can reach the place without knowing the direction it is quite impossible to locate a place so there are four main cardinal directions and they are north south west and east so the four main on the cardinal directions are north south west and east north is at the top south is at the bottom west is to the left and east to the right so we will see that north lies at the top whereas south is at the bottom west is to the left and east to the right usually maps are drawn with north at the top in the right hand corner this indicates north with an arrow marked with n you can all see that there is an arrow which is marked with n and this line is known as the north line because it indicates the north direction so if we know that where is the direction north then it's quite easy to find out the other directions that is south west and east so when we know that where north lies, it is quite easy to find out the other directions. Now, other than the four main or the cardinal directions, there are some other directions which lies in between or in middle of north and west, north and east, south and west and south and east. And they are known as the intermediate directions. So the intermediate directions are northwest, which lies between north and west, northeast, which lies between north and east, southwest, which lies between south and west, southeast, which lies between south and east. So the four intermediate directions are northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. So the four cardinal directions are north, south, west, and east. And the four intermediate directions are northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. Now, let us move ahead with the next element that is scale of a map. A map 
is a smaller version of a place that rarely shows the actual distances between places. To show the distances, we need to shrunk the distances so that the area being mapped can be fitted on a piece of paper. And to able to do this accurately, maps are drawn to a scale. So we can say that the actual distance between two places is identified by a scale. This helps to understand the actual distance between them. For example, the actual distance between two cities may be 100 kilometers, but it is not possible to draw a line of 100 kilometer on a sheet of paper. To show 100 kilometer on the ground, we use one centimeter on a map. That means we can say that 100 kilometer on the ground is shown as one centimeter on the map. Then the scale of the map is 1 cm is to 100 km. Now let us know the definition of a scale. What is a scale? The scale of a map is the ratio between distance shown on the map and the actual distance on the ground. So what is a scale? The scale of a map is the ratio between distance shown on the map and the actual distance on the ground. There are some maps which express a scale in a statement form. For example, if a scale of a map is said at 1 cm for every 10 km, then it means that every cm on the map represents 10 km on the actual ground. And this is where the scale is shown in a statement form. Now there are some maps where the scale is not given in a statement form, but they are given in the form of a line with distances marked on it and this is called the linear scale or a graphical scale. Each division in the bar is 1 cm on the map and indicates 100 km on a ground. Now let us know about the another element of a map and that is color. Now in a map we use certain standard colors to show the natural features of the earth's surface such as oceans sea, mountains, plains, glaciers, and etc. Like, for example, water bodies are always shown in the map in the color blue. Deep blue shows the deep water and light blue shows the shallow water. Whereas the mountains and highlands are shown in brown. Dark brown shows high mountains and light brown shows highlands and hills. And what about plateaus? Plateaus are shown in yellow and plains and lowlands are shown in green. So here we can see that in a map we use certain standard colors like blue, brown, yellow and green to show the natural features of the earth's surface. Now let us move ahead with another element of a map and that is a symbol. In map it is not possible at all to show the actual geographical features or places, for example, a temple, a bridge or a road in their exact shape and size because the structure of a temple is quite large and thus it is not possible to show the exact shape and size of a temple on a sheet of paper. To make it easier and show the features and places on a map, we use certain standard symbols in maps. Now let us know what is a symbol. A symbol is a shape or sign that is used to represent something. For example, to show a church in a map, we can just put a cross at that spot instead of writing the word church. So the cross here is a symbol which has been used instead of writing the word church and it has been used to show the location of the church. Now these symbols are universally accepted that means these are accepted by all the countries. Otherwise, imagine how difficult it would have been that different countries of the world use different symbols. So whenever you're going to go to a new place, you're going to find out new symbols being used in a map. And it's going to be quite difficult to find out the location or to locate any place or a geographical location with the help of the symbols if they are not accepted by all the countries. And that is why these symbols are universally accepted. Once 
we are familiar with this understanding a map becomes quite easier now the question is that how we are going to understand that which symbols and colors are used in a map for this purpose most maps use legend or a key to understand the symbols and colors which are used in a map so what is a legend the legend of a map explains that what each of the symbols used for it also explains that what the colors represent it is literally called the key to the map key why is it called the key to the map because it unlocks the secrets of the map so here we can well understand that how it is important to know about the different elements of the map so that we can understand the maps better and it also becomes easier for us to read the maps and to find out the location of any place in today's video we have discussed about the elements of a map where we have discussed on the direction scale of a map colors and symbols which are the main elements of a map i hope all of you understood that how it is important to know about the elements of a map so that we can understand the maps better and we can read the maps easier so i think all of you have understood the topics that we have discussed in today's video still if you have any query do let me know by just a comment in the comment box given below i hope all of you will like the video do share and subscribe my channel to watch more upcoming videos on different topics with this we came to an end of this chapter i will be back soon with a new chapter and a new video till then take care and stay safe thank you mm -hmm.